Hey guys, it's Teeksy here and welcome back to the channel for the first video in the best part of a week. Um, apologies, there was no uploads throughout last week guys, I was just really busy, I was revising for a test and I just generally didn't get as much time as I would have liked to to create content. But good news guys, we're back today and we're back with episode 1 of a brand new series I'm going to be running here on the channel where I'm going to be attempting to help you guys improve at demolition within Black Ops Cold War and more importantly improve for getting higher kill gameplays dropping nukes and yeah just generally getting really good gameplays and, and making the most of the spawns. Now I've put timestamps down in the description below guys if there's anything in particular that you want to jump to to, to sort of see in today's video but we're going to be kicking it off today kind of with like a pilot episode where I'm just going to be going through some of the real basics and fundamentals surrounding the game mode and then following on from this will be a map by map breakdown where I'll go through more specific sort of the spawn points, how to work the spawns, how to control the spawns on each map. So I'm going to kick off today guys with just two very very simple things just chatting about the game mode itself now obviously the aim of demolition is to get in the enemy spawn and spawn kill them the, the thing that makes demolition what it is, is is how good the spawns are and how very set the spawns are and obviously without tactical insurgents on this game you have to kind of learn to play your life a little bit more you have to be a little bit more methodical um, with your approach but obviously every game is different it won't always go well um, you won't always get in the spawn straight away but you just got to try and be patient and obviously try and learn each game maybe you know sometimes it'll just be lobby sometimes it just won't you won't have the luck but sometimes just try and learn maybe why some games are better than others and what you could do better um, next time but a lot of it as well depends on what you're going for I mean if you're just going for high kill gameplays and just going for high skill kill streaks you don't really have to worry about playing your life a bit more you can just be a bit more aggressive whereas if you're going for nukes obviously you have to be a little bit more patient you have to sort of think about what you're doing and obviously try and stay alive obviously as long as you can now the second thing I want to talk about guys is controlling the objective now this is a lot easier depending on how many players you've got in your party but you want to maximize the amount of time in the game to give yourself the best chance of getting as many kills as possible so in the attacking round you want to plant one bomb get the time extension but you want to leave the second bomb and just spend the rest of the, the, the round just slaying out getting as many kills as you possibly can in the defending round you want to let one bomb blow up so let the attackers plant one bomb get that time extension and then continue to slay out throughout the round and make sure that they don't get the second bomb and win the game to 2 nil. and then in the overtime round you can kind of do what you want you can win the round lose the round just slay out there's only one bomb in overtime so there's not as much you can do but really you're just trying to maximize as much time as you can to get as many kills as possible now i wouldn't worry about this too much guys because i play 90% of the time probably on my own and the other 10% of the time I only play as a duo and obviously I don't really have control over what my random teammates are doing and I've been in games where sometimes you win 2-0 really quickly you lose 2-0 really quickly maybe there's an imbalance in teams and maybe you only get like sort of 10 or 15 kills and you think oh that was a bit pointless but then I've been in other games guys where you know you have really long sort of 2-1 games where the teams are really balanced constantly back and forth bombs being planted diffused absolutely maximizing the time but it's always important even if you're playing on your own to keep the objective in your mind because there may be points in the game where you know maybe you need to plant or maybe you could defuse a bomb to give yourself the best sort of chance of, of maximizing that time now I'm going to spend the next part of the video guys talking about map awareness now map awareness is incredibly important in any game mode you play in any Call of Duty that you play um, but I'm going to be breaking it down into three different sections today and explaining why it's important within demolition so firstly guys um, the, the big thing that can help you is the minimap now obviously you're probably thinking well I know that minimaps good for you know when you've got spy planes up for enemy teams or enemy players that are not ghosted and obviously being able to see where enemy players are when they're shooting um, non-silenced weapons but the mini map is incredibly important to keep an eye on where your teammates are and what position they are taking up on the map because any player in demolition can can have an effect on how the game's going and how the spawns work and you have to really keep an eye on, on what they're doing because sometimes you know if you lose track of what an enemy, uh, a threat one of your teammates is doing, it can come back to kind of, you know, cause you problems. So one tip I would say for this is that if you bring up the scoreboard, as you can see now in the background, you can actually go across the map and it brings up a bigger version of the map, which can be a really, really quick way of just bringing that up very quickly. If you get a little second and seeing where um, your teammates are, because obviously from the normal minimap, you can't always see exactly where they're positioned. But I'm also just going to show you a clip here, guys, of what can happen if you lose track of your teammates. Um, so in this moment here guys I had a harp up and I was on about a 19 20 streak I was playing really really aggressively feeling really really confident and in the moment I just got really into the game and I lost track of what two of my teammates were doing now for the context of this video if I pause it here the attacker uh, the defending team sorry can spawn just behind me along along this wall and um, basically what happens here guys 
is I, the player I just killed spawns directly behind me. Now the reason he spawns directly behind me is that two of my teammates got really, really aggressive with the harp up. One pushed the mid spawn and the other player was transitioning through basketball and that basketball steps also getting aggressive to that mid spawn, which meant he was blocking the basketball spawns and because they were both pushing the mid spawn, the game obviously decided that those two spawn points were not a good place to spawn this player. So it spawns in behind me and even with the harp, I react as quickly as possible, but it does get me killed. So I'm just gonna show you, you know, obviously I'll go into spawns in more detail on each map breakdown. But I just wanted to show you that clip because it kind of goes to show that I thought I was blocking laundry spawn, but because I lost track of my teammates, you know, obviously that came caused me some problems. It ended up dying on a pretty decent streak. But that can happen, you know, even when you know the spawns, things like this can happen. But I thought it was a good sort of way of kind of explaining and showing to you what can happen. But also uh, being good with, you know, knowing what your teammates are doing is that it can also help you. If you're playing with randoms, a lot of people that play Demolition will be trying to spawn kill. So if you're playing with another player who looks like they're trying to spawn kill, it will make it easier to work with that player. You know, even without communication, you can kind of work out what they're doing and what area they're playing. So it's really, really crucial to kind of understand what your teammates are doing. The second thing I want to talk to you guys about is the objective. Now, I've already spoke about kind of controlling it, but you also want to use the objectives to start making predictions because from the amount of demolition I've played in this game, more often than not, a lot of players will play objective, especially if a bomb needs to be defused or especially if there's one bomb left that needs to be planted from sort of an attacking point of view. Now, I'm going to use Raid again for an example here. Now, one position I like to play on this map is around Wheelbarrow. And from here, you can see that laundry spawn on that wall that we just spoke about in the, in the previous clip. And on this map, guys, the A bomb site is on that side of the map and the B, site, the B bomb site is on pool side of the map. And so imagine if so the scenario we're going to do here guys is imagine if the a bomb had blown up and the only bomb left was the b bomb on the pool side of the map imagine the b bomb was planted and you saw two or three players from from wheelbarrow you saw them spawn up at laundry wall but then because if they run straight forward they don't run towards you it's very rare that you're going to pick up that kill straight away unless you're using like a sniper and you hit like a, an instant shot as they spawn but what i would start to think is well, they're probably going to go to the objective so where could they go oh, i'd probably assume that they might run through pillars across mid map and come down pool steps to get to that bomb so from where i am i would rotate or transition back through money and through kitchen and be ready to pick them up as they run across middle of the map so you know they won't always do that you know not players aren't always going to do what you you think they're going to do but if you start to think like that and start to make those kind of predictions and maybe think what would you do in that situation more often than not it will start to kind of benefit you and it basically works like that on any map especially if there's one bomb you know if it needs to be diffused where are the defending team meant likely to go from where they've spawned and the same with the attacking team you know they're probably going to want to attack that bomb where are they likely to go depending on where they've spawned and then from there you just kind of um you know you should try and make some predictions about what might happen now the next thing on and the last thing i want to talk to in terms of map awareness guys is the kill feed now the kill feed is obviously a live feed of what is happening and again you can use that to start making predictions now if you see three players in the kill feed die from the enemy team, then you know those three players have got a spawn in within the next couple of seconds, somewhere within the spawn, and then you kind of use the position that you're in and use the position of any teammates that are pushed up the map to try and work out where they're most likely to spawn. And again, it's just about starting to make predictions, especially with the kill feed as well. You've got to know when to drop off and when to be aggressive. If quite a lot of players from the other team die, you want to get as aggressive as you can and push up the map to try and hold them back. But also, if there's not many players from the enemy team dying, and your team's under a lot of pressure you might need to drop off try and help out get some kills and reset them back to their spawn because you can't get any spawn kills if the enemy team are not dying if that kind of makes sense and one other thing around the kill feed guys it's not as important but it's something you can keep an eye on is who you are killing because obviously every time you kill someone their name's going to pop up and if you kill the same player two or three times in a row then you know that player's maybe starting to hunt you maybe you need to reposition in the spawn but also if you kill two or three different players in one position you kind of might think to yourself right i've killed those two or three players now at least one of those players is probably going to come back for me so i'm going to move now and reposition to keep them guessing you know because if you stay in one position for too long it can make it too easy for, for players off spawn to find you and also if you end up with two or three players starting to hunt you if they all push the same angle and you're there you're probably dead but if they all push the same angle and you've moved nobody knows where you are keeps them guessing and can frustrate them even more now i just want to really really quickly guys touch on class setup this is definitely down to personal choice but for me i think ghost and ninja are incredibly critical in this game mode because more often than not in demolition i find myself going on really really long flanks to get behind the enemy team especially sometimes to clear out bomb sites works better than on some maps than other maps but there are certain maps obviously we will get into the kind of uh, details of that on on each map but there are certain maps where 
some bomb sites, the defending team will just post up and it can be incredibly difficult to go in through the front. So you have to be able to kind of flank your way around. And I think the best way of doing that is to obviously have a ghost and ninja on. So overall guys, that's gonna kind of do it for today's video. I don't really wanna go into too much more detail of anything. I, I just wanted to run through some real basics and fundamentals. Cause I think if you can start to change the way you think when you're playing and try to be one or two steps ahead of what you're currently doing, that can help you to kind of be ahead of other players and start to predict what players are doing. And, and sort of everything I went through in today's video, the more you start to think about this stuff, the more it will help you. And this will become more natural over time. I mean, what I've mentioned in today's video will help, but it's not something you're just gonna pick up instantly. You gotta keep getting reps. You gotta get yourself into certain situations, certain scenarios, and then think, oh, why did I die that time? Or why didn't it work? You know, what can I do better next time? And spawn killing as well, guys, is all about mentality. I mean, enemy players, are likely to lose composure the more times you kill them in a row because we've all been there when you're getting killed off spawn it's not a nice thing but when you're on the other side of it it's absolutely brilliant and yeah you know the players will start to lose composure and that can really really play into your hands as well especially if they keep pushing you especially if they're getting really desperate and they're trying to hunt for you they really want to kill you and it's all about just maximizing that and and you know rotating moving around keeping them guessing and you know just you know the more times that you kill them the more annoyed they're going to get. Anyways, guys, I hope you found today's video useful. If you have, please do hit the like button down below. And please let me know down in the comment section, guys, if you've got any questions, anything you maybe didn't understand, anything you want me to kind of uh, go into a little bit more detail on, or if there's anything I could have done to improve today's video, please do let me know down in the comment section, guys. And obviously, like I say, this is just the basics and fundamentals. We will be back with a map by map breakdown for all 12 of the demolition maps that you can play. And in those videos, I'll be going into definitely more sort of specifics and also showing you more kind of examples and clips from actual gameplay so you can sort of start to learn more. But what well, that leaves me to say, guys, is if you're brand new around here and want to find your way back for more, please do consider subscribing to the channel. And as always, guys, I hope everyone has a great day and I'll catch you in the next one.